Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Roy Ramo and I'm a second year computer science student in the College of Management Academic Studies in Rishon Lezion, Israel. And I'm here today to introduce you to our JavaFX desktop application that I've worked in collaboration with Jonathan Morag. But before we begin, I would like to express my big appreciation to our lecturer in this course, Dr. Eliyahu Halaschi. Thank you very much, Eli. We really appreciate everything. Okay, now let's go through our project divided to milestones. In the first milestone, we've implemented the design of our project, including solid and grass principles. Then we've supported IO streaming through files and sockets. Further on, we've moved from pseudocode to an actual code in Java with large use of bridge pattern in this one. The main idea of this milestone was solving any searchable problem with a searcher algorithm that fits the best to the problem. In milestone number four, we've built an entire interpreter to a custom language. Its purpose was actually to interpret a given script to commands that are sent to the flight simulator application. And you, we will show it later on. In the last milestone, we've actually combined all our knowledge that we've gathered during this course in a one final product that we're going to demonstrate to you right now. Okay, so let's open our application. For that, I will open the solver server so we can send it our path and it will return the shortest path. Okay, this is our application. Let's go ahead and load the data of the map. It's in a CSV file. Okay, perfect. So we got our map and let's go ahead and try to connect to our solver server and get the shortest path. So I'm just going to try it. Okay, perfect. It's working perfect. Okay, so now the next step is to test our autopilot mode. We will run our takeoff script. It's supposed to take off the airplane to the air. So we run this one and open our flight gear simulator. Welcome aboard, need help, use help tutorials. Okay, so now that the simulator is on, we can see that we started on auto start. So the engine is already running. I will just change the environment settings so we can see everything in daylight. And we want to see now the airplane moving by itself, by the script. So now I'm not going to touch anything in the computer. We will see this script running and it's supposed to take the airplane up to the air. Okay. Now the script takes effect. see already that the airplane is moving on the map it's refreshing itself in live time you can see a very smooth and balanced takeoff Perfect. So we are in the 
air. Okay, so now after we've seen the airplane take off from the script of the autopilot mode, let's connect to our simulator and try to move it by the manual mode. So, choose manual mode now. And we can see that the steering wheel moves exactly as we want. See all the head of this and the throttle, of course, is also working. Just stabilize this. And the rudder, of course, is already also moving as expected. Perfect. So as we've seen, the application works perfectly. Now I want to dive down to the design behind. So we'll close this for now. We'll go to the design. So we can see that in the server side we had a server and a client handler interfaces and we used this design in order to build our server. Then we've used bridge patterns so we can inject any searcher algorithm to solve any searchable problem and in our specific project we've built metric searchable to do so. Okay, so let's move to the client side. We have here the map drawer, who is responsible, of course, to draw the map. Then we have the joystick controller, who controls the logic of the joystick. And the last uh, element is the view. The main window controller is actually the view. So I want to go through all the architecture that we've used in this project. So we've used the MVVM architecture. We have the view, the view model, and the model. So for the view, the view model is actually an abstraction of the model. For the model, the view model is responsible for converting the data from the model to something that the view can actually understand. And I will go through all the flow of the things. It begins with interaction from the user. The user does something, and then and you have data binding between the view and the view model. Now the view model noticed that something has changed in the in his uh, that in data members and sends and activates a function or asking for some calculation from the model. The model then sends notifications that the data or the calculations are ready and this the view model again deciding what to do with this information and so on. It, it goes back to the view, it's sending notifications to the view and the view shows the output to the user again. As we can see in the model we have the interpreter here for example. So I think that's all. We want to thank you very much for watching. This is us. My name is Roy Hamo and I did it with Jonathan Morag in collaboration. You can find us through our LinkedIn and email. So thank you very much. Goodbye.